it's my lunch break. I've got 45 minutes and I want to see how far I can get with painting this cucumber on this small panel within that time frame. I normally don't do do so, uh, limiting myself in, uh, in specific times, but I'm curious how this will end up. First, let's have a sip of coffee. And now let's dive right in. So, let's get to it. I have on my palette some ultramarine blue, some phthalo green, and I had some leftover paints also, which is yellow ochre and cadmium yellow. And white, of course. Now, let's see how far we can get. And to start, I will start with the darker colors first. Let me just get a brush here. Would be useful to have one. And I also like to keep some tissue in my other hand to wipe off my brush. Now, I'm starting with quite a big brush because once again, we don't have much time and we can get some uh, shapes quite easily in there. I'll just start with some of that Taylor green very thinly in the shadow parts. Just putting it on there. Now, I find it a bit too uh, vibrant at this stage. As you can tell, it's a very strong color, but this is just to get some basic shapes in the picture. We will fine tune it in due time, or if time allows, that is. Just being very rough here. Actually, what I like seeing about this cucumber, it's not really round it has all these angular shapes to it as you see before i put some uh, some slight markings on there that was done with pencil with a pastel pencil so that's uh, that's nicely with oil paints without smudging all over the place You can see a very thin layer of paint here. Not taking it too serious. Anyway, we will put ourselves, I put myself a limit of time in which I want to, uh, in which I need to continue with my actual job. Because for now I'm still a hobbyist, an enthusiast, and it's not my living to paint. Well, who knows, maybe in the future that might change. Now that shadow area here, I see some blues in there as well. I'm gonna mix a bit of blue with that phthalo green now to create a bit darker tone. Again, keeping it quite light, can always go over it again later on. I can always add more colors to my palette if I deem it necessary. Now the panel itself, I uh, treated with some uh, gesso, it's an MDF panel, treated with some gesso and then I went over with some burnt Shanna acrylics, which gives this nice warm undertone. Now, the shadowy part I will apply here as well. Just keeping it simple. No exact shapes, just indications. I'm also thinking of not filling the entire background. 
but just giving some hints of a background later on. What I now want to do is get a bit of the color over here, over there. Now, I see that green. Huh? We have this beautiful phthalo green, which is a slightly bluish. So what I'll do, I'll take some phthalo green and add some, first some yellow ochre to it. That gives a more neutral color. And because the phthalo green is quite transparent, it neutralizes quite quickly. Let's see, is that about right? Well, for the shadow part, that's actually quite a good color. And for the lighter part, I need to go a bit lighter. So I'm taking another splotch. Fortunately, you cannot see this on the camera when I'm mixing. I do apologize for that. But I'm adding also some cadmium yellow there. needs to be more bright. And you see it's quite bright actually on top there. It's getting closer. The lightest parts we can always add at a later stage. Wiping off my brush and my tissue. So I don't want the colors to be uh, contaminated. And then We'll just start a bit with that tone I just mixed. This is the phthalo green and the yellow ochre. I think that makes quite a convincing shadowy part. Keeping it simple, keeping it rough. And slightly the lighter color. Also very thinly, as you can see. Just determining the position of things a bit. No need to be all precise. As you can see, these strokes, they also make a bit of texture of the cucumber. Come through there. Now those edges I can refine later on when I do a bit of the background work. So not too worried about that. I'm taking a little bit a thicker paint to already Get some more of that texture in. This is with the cadmium yellow in it. And I might do that here as well. It has a bit of a shape there, so I'm just twi twisting my brush a bit in the shapes which I see. No. These are also interesting parts, how I don't know yet to deal with. I do know by the looks of it that the insides of the cucumber are actually very white. So later on, we'll most likely mix that phthalo green with some, first some yellow ochre and then some white. Yellow ochre to neutralize it a bit and white to lighten it. Because if I would use uh, the, the white straight on the phthalo green, then you get a very vibrant turquoise color. It's beautiful, but it doesn't look very convincing <laughs> if you're trying to uh, make a cucumber. And just remember, when you're painting, not everything needs to become a masterpiece, huh? You can just have fun exploring things and pushing yourself, trying to find new, way, new ways and just exploring the subject. Now, I'm going to 
take a bit of the white now. Take a little green. So let me just show you what that does real quickly there. So as you can see, this is a very turquoise color. It's a bit too cool. So we need to add some yellow. And I like yellow ochre. I love yellow ochre. I use it quite a lot because it's really nice to neutralize colors and to make them more, well, I would say, soft. Needs to be more light. It's almost getting a bit grayed out now due to the yellow ochre and white, which is good because also on the picture they're not too vibrant colors over there in the inside. Yeah, for the middle one, for the bit darker um, areas, so the, the, the ones in the shadow, I think this is a quite, uh, quite an okay start. Again, doing it very lightly, just rubbing it in there. They, they call this scumbling. Sometimes you scumble upon the most wonderful areas like that. Too dark, as you can see. I'm also taking some of that uh, yellow and white. See if we can lighten that up. Oh, look. There we already go. This is basically the cadmium yellow with white, which I'm putting in the wet paint here. See, experimenting, exploring, having a set time frame makes you do these kind of things. Now, the seeds are a bit darker, so those I can put in later maybe with a smaller brush. Now, where do we see the similar color that's in this area? So, let me try putting in something there too. And also over there, you still have a bit of the shadowy side. I'll need to brighten that up. else not really this one is a much more yellow i'm gonna squeeze out a little bit of extra cadmium yellow because i see that it's uh, quite a useful color for this subject and i'm gonna bring it into my white mixture just to yellow it up a bit now it's quite yellow I don't want to spoil it with too much white now. So let's just have a look what it gives us, shall we? Again, very thinly. No, it's still a bit too dark, I guess. Too much in line with the other one. So I do need to add white. More. For the edge work, it's uh, quite nice there though. Let's put in a bit of more variety in there. You know, sometimes you just stumble upon this. When you're playing around. Just go with the flow. See where it brings you. Still using that big brush. You've got a lot of ground to cover in a short amount of time. Now for this edgy part, I think this is quite an okay start.
You know, I don't like to paint too much with white because I often feel it kills the colors a lot. It makes them very fresh. Let's just have a look, but this seems about right. Cleaning the brush again. Taking some white. Not not white, but the light mixture. I'm trying to keep brush marks in there. I always like that. I'm trying not to overdo or to overwork pieces. Keeping it simple. Putting it on more thick, it also gets that sense of uh, more depth. Now, actually, the seeds, I do think I see a bit yellowish there. Slightly darker. Just put some random shapes in there. Doesn't have to be perfect, guys. But it needs to be darker. Later on, I can always add some more colors to it, some variations. Not too concerned about it all. Now, I find it now a bit hard to judge in the context. So I want to add some more uh, detailing to the background. Now, what I like to do for that is take some of the ultramarine blue, mix it with my yellow ochre. You get a bit of a, a neutral tone. Adding some white because I don't want it to be too dark. Adding quite some white. Do I like this? No, it's too dark. I want to add a lot of white there still. That's better. No. Okay, the brush. Now here we have a bit darker area so let's just go over there next to it As you can see it's still quite uh, quite dark here But it does give a bit more context to it all. I need more white. So when I'm saying this, I'm holding my brush actually between my teeth. So that's why I sound like I'm not having any teeth. Sorry for that. That's better. I'm lightening it even more so. And adding a bit of blue for some variation in the background. Cooling it down a bit and lighting it up quite a lot actually here. I always like to use uh, grace in my paintings because <clears throat> it really makes uh, your subjects pop out. I 
do see that this shadowy area is quite uh, quite sharp. I'd like to put that in there too. Again, still simplifying. I like to have a bit of these ragged edges around it to indicate that it is a study of something. Here I'd like to have a bit of warmth of the underlayer shine through, so I'm just going over it very, very thinly and spreading out the paint quite a bit. Maybe shadow shape. A bit softer, so let's soften that edge as we go. So, see it already adds some variation to the hole. Here I do see some blue, so let's just play around with that. Just for the fun of it. I wanted to go kind of a little out of focus here towards the back. We don't care too much about that. Concumer in the background. We just let it fade out a bit. Mixing a bit of colors here on the panel for the background. To give it a bit more depth. Not really happy with this shadow yet. I do like how the darker colors are quite neutral in the background. So let's just go over that with a similar color. And just let it fade away in the shadows a bit. See if that works. This light part up here is a bit too disturbing, so I'll just move that away by going over it by paint. Now I want a bit more of a connection between the background or with, uh, between the shadow and the cucumber itself. So going over that here. And it just fades into each other, adding some darker notes on the skin here to give it that textury feel to it. But it's lacking a bit depth. I'm adding some ivory black, just a little bit, and just the rush it in my mouth again. Just adding a little bit, mixing it a bit down though with the already darker colors on my palette. Because this does allow me to create a bit more depth. I'm using it quite sparingly though, as you can tell. And I mix it down because I don't want to kill the whole piece by using too much black. Long the shadows. Right here the skin gets a bit lighter.
that is reflecting a bit of the background. Same goes for this one. Making it a bit neutral. Anyway, I don't want my focus on there. And I can always add some more grains into it. bit lighter again here. Let's just see how far we can get when we just put it on with our palette knife. Oops, I'll just go over that later on. Introducing some lighter colors there also. Just to give it that more depth. Let's make this repair this little part. This background is still quite bothering me now at this stage, so I'm gonna just continue filling it up a little bit. Still showing through the underpainting, but at least making it a bit, uh, a bit more presentable. Again, using very little paint, as you can see. Because that way you see that gorgeous glow underneath. Oh, there I want it a bit darker, actually. Just strokes in all random directions. Now we need some more lights in there, I feel. And I think it's time to move on to a little less big brush. <coughs> to define those edges, for example. Just gives me a little bit more control. A 
And I think it's okay to exaggerate the shapes a bit. As long as you can see what the subject is meant to be. And you're doing already a great job. there immediately makes the lighter parts lighter Need, in need of a new tissue because I wipe quite a bit. Here, the, the skin is a bit further away, as you can see. This shape I'm not really happy with yet already a bit better and then I find here needs to be a bit more thick too here actually you don't see that much of the edge work same here It's really a focal point though, due to the dark spot. So. Making this one slightly bigger by putting that skin there. Okay. Some more definition. Oh, five minutes left, guys. I can tell you, time goes very quick. Shaping a bit by utilizing the background. Same thing I can do over here. Now let's see if we can try to get a bit of that illusion of seeds. See? Just very simply making some indications of lines. Not taking it all too serious. Kind of sculpting my way through here. I feel we need more light there. And that's neat. That needs to be a bit yellowish. Let's see what we can make there. And 
And that will do. Actually, you also see quite a very vibrant green there come through. Maybe. I don't know yet. It's not that vibrant as in the piece, but once again, we're working with a quite limited um, palette here. Making it also a bit harder to do. This edge can definitely be softened. We don't want to focus on that one, remember? And squiggling it around a bit for the ragged shape. Playing around and we need to add some more whites. That's where the light hits. It's basically some white mixed with ultramarine blue. Believe it or not, now I'm going to actually use some color of the foreground. Ever so slightly, but then mixed with the more white. To indicate also here that shine. I do feel the seeds needs to be a bit darker here. Oh, let's do that. Not too dark, so I'm blending it in a little bit. Not too much. Don't want to over blend it. Same goes here. Just indications. Feel we are getting close to the end of it with this shadow. Needs a little bit more work. This one too, just making it all lost in there. Another shadowy part. <coughs> And as a final touch, I see quite some very bright spots. Let's see if we can do something with the palette knife on there.
Move just slightly. Also add some texture as you see. I just want to point some dots for like individual highlights. It's not pure white what I'm using. I do feel that adds some sense of uh, more realism to it. Darker seeds. And then lighter here. Just going over it thinly. There. And this is still a bit too vibrant for my liking, so I'm going over it more neutralized darks. Now, my time is up, guys, and uh, all that's left is to sign it. I do that with the toothpick. To scratch it out in the wet paint. So, this is as far as I'm going to take it today, because time simply doesn't allow me to take it any further than this. And now I'm going to drink my cold coffee. Have a nice day, and if you want to paint this piece as well, it's up on my Instagram channel, at least the reference is, together also with this painting, and I invite you to paint the same, and maybe also set yourself a time limit and see how far you can get. Happy painting!